it is 6.03. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, ensuring a quorum. One, two, three. Yep. Okay. Um, the meeting purpose tonight, board reorganization and orientation. Yay. Welcome to our newest members, Thank Ryan you. and Emil. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, we're going to start with public comment. Hmm. Um, I do see uh, one member of the public, so I'm going ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and, and read our uh, general public comment preamble. I mean, technically, I'm not sure if the public correct. Okay. Uh, the board welcomes comments, but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or to the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand, either in person or electronically, and wait to speak until you are called on. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can certainly express your agreements with past comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. With that, I'll open the floor for any public comment. Unsurprisingly, we're a small group tonight. Small but mighty. Um, hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Uh, I've welcomed them, but I haven't officially introduced them. So um, if both of you each would like to introduce yourself, and then if we can go around with all the other board members and say who you are and what town you represent, that would be lovely. Neil Parmalee, Randolph. I'm Ryan Anderson from Brookfield. Sam Hooper, Brookfield. Sarah Hopkins. Oh, just go Let's ahead. do everyone, yeah. Do everyone. Okay. I'm Kyle Southworth, uh, clerk. Uh, Heather Lawler, I'm the assistant superintendent. Lane Millington, superintendent. Hannah Arias, Randolph. Rachel Gatiss, Braintree. Yay, and who do we not have with us? Katya. Ah, yay! Oh, good. That's an entrance right there. How about that timing? Yeah, that was pretty impressive. We just did a, no, we just did a round. This is Katya Evans from Braintree. Party. Yay. I'm so sorry. You're perfect. Our most consistent. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so the time has come for the biggest purpose of this meeting, which is reorganizing um, and uh, any discussion that needs to happen therein. So I'll go on with running at least this first part of the meeting and then um, depending on what happens, it may be handed over to someone else. Um, the first uh, seat to be nominated, seconded, and then voted on um, is chair, currently myself. So are there any nominations? I nominate Seconded by Rachel. I think so. Um, are there other nominations? Do I take other nominations? Yes, yes please. Other nominations. Great. <laughs> <laughs> do you accept the nomination? I do accept the nomination um, with thanks and appreciation. Uh, so then all in favor of... Did, oh. Please discuss. I'm sorry, this is awkward. Well, I'm making it awkward. <laughs> Discussion. I think you've done a nice job over the last year chairing the board. I think it would be great if you would continue. Thank you. I think continuity is important. So I think you get the hang of it. Continue. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay, hey, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, moving on, Vice Chair, this is a currently vacant position. Uh, I will uh, hear for any nominees. I call for nominees. I nominee Ann Kaplan. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. That was Sam. Other nominees? Is anybody else interested? <laughs> it's a party and a half. Everybody's quiet and like, don't make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, discussion? And do you oh. accept the nomination? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Welcome. Hi. Uh, discussion. I won't skip that part this time. Anne uh, recently attended a workshop where I was there too about orientation and or or orienting board members, and uh, it was really nice to see you there. And you made me feel welcome, so thank you for that. And uh, so I think that this is appropriate. Nice. Okay, all those in favor, Ann Kaplan, Vice Chair, aye. please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions. Great, congratulations, Ann. Uh, okay, clerk, currently happily held by Sam Hooper. <laughs> 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 Do I have any nominations? I nominate Ryan Anderson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Then I'll second it if you're if you're willing to. Do it. What Do are the duties of the clerk? You can yeah, so inform him what it please is. tell me the duties of the clerk. <laughs> sure. So um, the clerk takes minutes in. Well, we don't take minutes of inside executive session, but once we exit executive session, usually Kyle doesn't come to that session and often can leave, so then the clerk would take minutes following that, any Obviously. actions we take coming out of executive session. And it's like a also, pretty simple form. It's a, yes, it's a very Kyle, simple form. Kyle gives you the form, and she Green takes holder. the minutes, she takes the minutes for the regular meeting. All right. So it's really only for when you, we have an executive session. And in the absence of Kyle, you would take minutes for the, the clerk would take minutes for the entire meeting. I understand. And I will say it is quite minimal, and I will continue to do it if you don't want to do it. The thing that I'm bad at is sending the uh, executive session minutes into Kyle post-meeting. Well, we got to take it up. Is this your form of hazing me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I accept no, we this. Don't, we don't. <laughs> Do you accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion to be had? Or further nominations? None being heard. All those in favor of Ryan Anderson serving as our clerk for a year, and then we have uh, uh, elections again. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Abstentions. Great. Thank you very much. This is the form you shall be filling out later. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. <laughs> welcome Thank you. to your new job. Thank you. Sam will mentor you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll look forward to your guidance and leadership. <laughs> Um, schedule for regular meetings. So right now they are the second Wednesday of every month at six o'clock, and there is a, a of course rotating locations for all of the meetings. Um, would anyone like the board to entertain a different day and or time? I move to approve the schedule as submitted for keeping it how we have it. I'll second that. Seconded by Sarah. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Passes unanimously. Uh, we need to assign a member to sign official documents in the absence of the chair. It's currently vacant. It was filled by the former vice chair, Chelsea Sprague.
do I have a nomination? And would you be willing to do that? Uh, yeah, but I might be away, but I can work with Hannah and we can just assign somebody else. I'm going to be away in, in the beginning. I'll be here in May. Um, I nominate you. Yeah. That's fine. I'll push it off the Seconded by Ryan. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions. Great. Unanimously passes. Thank you, Anne. Um, RTCC representatives, currently Sam and Sarah. Um, I guess I'll start with are either or both of you interested in continuing to serve in that position? Um, I have been on it for two years now, so if anyone else would like a stab at it, um, I am certainly willing to still be on the board, but I want to make it open for other people. So I'll just just say the RTCC advisory committee meets once a quarter, okay. correct? It ends um, up being like every other month. Every, oh, so more often than I thought. Okay. Well, it's less often than this board meeting, yes. mm -hmm. um, and it's an hour before this board meeting in that same location. So it's basically an elongated night. Um, so instead of nominations, I'll just put out there, is anyone interested? Really dying to, uh, what to if, serve. What have you guys been doing on that board? It might be helpful. <clears throat> kind of what the discussion's been, what you've been up to. Well, a lot of the discussion we've had lately is mm -hmm. in regards to enrollment, I would say. Would mm -hmm. you agree with that, Sam? Mm -hmm. um, and new programming. Yes. So, and a lot of that, I guess, is going to be determined on if we go f move forward with a new building in the future. So, um, and then there's the occasional approval of new vehicles and things, necessities for the program. Budgetary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who are the other representatives who sit on that board? Other groups? Is there uh, anyone else coming to the other schools? The sending schools? Mm, no. Yes, that's, uh, <laughs> we recently have from, he's come to one meeting. Um, and there was a woman who was coming for quite a while. I want to say, her name begins with an A, but it's not a common name. Anybody help me on this one? No one knows it? Okay. Hold on. I'll pull up the members Should of the be on there on the minutes. Yeah. So on the that minute. just a discussion of bringing some of the sending schools in? They're supposed to. They're supposed to. They're supposed they're to. They're it's getting, supposed getting them to attend. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, what, remind us what the goal of that, because it's sort of an advisory It is. It's, it's, an, advisory it's an advisory board, board. Um, but they are, this board is not really supposed to act on too much unless you've considered their recommendation. So you make the official vote on what happens at RTCC we as the OSSD board, OSD board, but they are supposed to make recommendations. And again, your job, they're advisory, so your job is to consider the recommendation, but it doesn't mean that you have to so always follow go it. With what yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would, and I'd just say the, the value to me from my perspective of sitting on that board is just having a more uh, closer, just having a closer relationship with what's going on at RTCC and what's on the horizon. Um, I'd, I'd be willing, I guess, to serve on that. Like any of the RUHS meetings, yeah, which is awfully right. convenient. Um, so I'll move to approve um, the Sam and Ann for the RTCC as the RTCC representatives. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? Great. 
All those in favor of the two nominees, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Great. Thank you both. Appreciate the, the extra time commitment. Um, Point Teacher Contract Negotiations Committee. Aha. Yes, this is certain. This is currently myself and uh, two vacancies. Megan and Chelsea were the other two um, board members serving on that committee. Um, so these are uh, the professional staff, uh, the teachers, um, the Negotiations Committee, which in a year with negotiations, which we are coming into, um, can be a time commitment. Um, depends on how they go, quite frankly. Um, the superintendent is there with us, um, along with uh, counsel, Pietro Lynn. Um, there are meetings with the union. We have, you know, we, we split off. We talk amongst ourselves. We also have separate meetings, just the committee, if there are um, items to consider, just the committee. Um, it's interesting, it's challenging, and I'm happy to serve on that committee again, unless there are three others that are yearning and burning. Is anyone interested? I will join that committee. Great. If you'll have me. You're <laughs> from our support staff. <laughs> I'd be willing to join that committee also. Great, thank you, Emil. Anyone else want to battle it out? It's a fun time. <laughs> I move to appoint Hannah, Emil, and Sarah to the teacher contract negotiating committee. Thank you. Do I have a second? second. And seconds. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Passes unanimously. Support staff contract negotiation committee. Um, currently, Anne, Sarah, and Katya. Um, this one is very similar, uh, just with kind of a, a different group of, of um, people. It's the support staff. Um, I'll first ask the the sitting members if you are interested in continuing to serve on this committee. <laughs> I'll stay. Okay. Are we negotiating this year? We are. October. Mm. <laughs> it feels like we just oh, finished, doesn't it? Both, both of te 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 us. Okay. teachers and support staff okay. as well. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll stay. Okay. Sarah, that would be a really big commitment for yeah, you to serve yeah. on both. No. Yes, um, um, so I, I am giving up the support staff position. Okay, so that's two vacancies if there are people who are interested in serving. I can step into that. Great, Ryan, thank you. I think Rachel's looking really interested. <laughs> I was just noticing the town breakdown that we've got all Randolph people on the teacher contract. Ah. Oh, good, good eye. Like, does that matter? Probably not. That's an interesting well, observation. <coughs> I wish it had come up during discussion. Well, I didn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that cause concern for everyone? It's an interesting thing to note. No? Okay. How do you feel? Then, Sam, I'll put you on the hot Just seat, too. Just by curiosity, what was the breakdown of it last year? Let's see. It was well, Chelsea representative. Chelsea was so two Brookfield. Randolph and a Brookfield. Okay. I mean, I I don't have a problem with it. And the support staff was two Randolph, two Randolph and a Brainger. Which wasn't by design, but yeah, interesting nonetheless. Yeah. So we have Ryan, Katya, Sam. You want to arm wrestle this one? And. <laughs> Do you want to go to our TCC lens and I'll take this one? No. Okay. Oh. I, can't, I can't get here at five. Like, mm. I, can, I struggle to get here at six sometimes, so. All right. What do you want to do? I guess I'll take this one. You can push gotcha's, gotcha's laughing. Yes, I'll do, I'll do this one. Great. I, I move that the support staff negotiation cool. committee, contract negotiation committee, um, consists of Rachel, 
Ryan, and Katya. I'll second. Seconded by Sarah. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Thank you, passes unanimously. Thank you, the three of you. Um, sorry, I forgot my glasses. Um, review of board expectations, rules, and orientation. Oh, this is me. Um, I see you both have your mm, binders, which were put together, I believe, by yeah. you and Chelsea. Mm -hmm. um, Oh boy, I don't want to take this one on my own, you guys. So, anytime I, you are a great trainer, um, I guess I'll start there. I find, not, everyone, not, to, them. not to them, everyone, yeah. absolutely. Ongoing process yes. of learning yes. how this works. Um, referring back to the policies as often as you can, although I will say, for me, along with learning from the written word, every single meeting ends up being a, a, a teaching, a learning moment for me, um, even right down to the policies. So I would encourage new members and also current members, or um, continuing members, um, to rely on each other, um, to ask questions, to call each other out, as it were, to challenge each other. Because um, we're all learning every day. Even a, a trainer coming in about policy governance, that person sitting in with our group, it would be, um, I think, a learning experience for them as well. Because there are rules we can abide by. We're still a group of humans, you know, with, with our own personal rules going on. Um, we are a policy governance board. Um, Again, constantly a learning uh, uh, process to figure out what that means. We are governed by our policies. I think of it visually, we're up here. We see things umbrella style. That's uh, the position from which we gather, in, no, by which we um, oversee the district. Um, we are to, uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you guys help. You're doing great, Hannah. You're doing great. Our connection to the district is through the superintendent. The superintendent provides us with information. We challenge that information. We accept that information. We um, delve into that information. We ask for information. Um, and he or she in that position provides it to us. Um, executive limitations are the... Um, at the yep stop Can we just Bing. pause on we've lost i think camera here for online and i think it's that cord right there and i didn't want to this way start right back up when it plugs in uh yep that one oh with the Come on, you can do this. Talk, talk about putting on the spot. He needs his reading that. glasses, too. <laughs> yeah. At least on, one pair of I was picking on him earlier. <laughs> All the funny's going to have in front of us. <laughs> it's not even going to be that long way. <laughs> Well, but it's the owl yeah, that does the video and the audio. Um, I'm so sorry. No, you're okay. Oh, uh, it says camera's off on the computer, though. See how it's... Right, the camera on the computer, oh, though, here. not the owl. Michael, can you hear us? Mm. Can I? 
Well, but that would be the microphone on the computer. Same with the camera. It's that microphone we need going. Which I can certainly do as a backup. Yeah. Sorry. Good catch. Unplug it and plug it back in. Good night. Oh, it's working for me. Okay. Still in the front. Yeah, there's one. Mm-hmm. Hi. No, no, no. I want to point out that your June board meeting is on the same night as senior awards this year. Oh, gosh. In case that's a conflict for any of you, if any of you have a senior or someone in your family, I just wanted to let you know. Or I think it would just be nice for board members to attend that. Wouldn't it be? So, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. So that's um, Brook. It's scheduled at Brookfield Elementary on the same night, so possibly you might want to. I know you already approved the calendar. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at that time, but you may want to modify the calendar for June. I was not looking for Valentine's Day uh, this year. <laughs> oh, right. Let's not do that again. Okay. So the mic That's is really good there now. Thank owl. you. Everything's back. Oh. It is back through the owl. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Lane, for going to get him. Yeah, we good. <laughs> uh oh. -uh. Actually, I think you got him. Did it get unplugged again? Or did it? No, 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 no. We're good. I think we're good. All right. Oh, we're okay. this there. All right. Sorry about that. Time. Thank you. Okay, so I totally derailed us there. No, it's um, fine. No, we're I think. We're at executive limitations. Yeah. What's that? We're at executive limitations. Yeah. At executive limitations, which are the standards to which we hold the superintendent. Um, we are provided with um, reports on each executive limitation each meeting, um, and we first have a first read we don't vote to accept or not accept um the superintendent provides uh, his or her interpretation of that executive limitation um evidence that is not only available when that report is provided to us in meeting materials but it is always available at the central office um, I'm going to say that again. Things are available at the central office. I think it's important, I'm going to remind myself and in turn remind all of you that um, what we do is not confined to once a month from six to, uh, um, it's not confined to the work we do here. There's work out there um, going in and reading the, the evidence so we really understand it. Um, reading through it beforehand, being prepared for the second read and hopefully a vote to accept. Or if we don't, it's either we're asking for more evidence, um, uh, a further interpretation, or it means we need to look at that executive limitation and figure out if that's what we're really asking for. It may be that we need to accept an interpretation and, and um, you know, a report of compliance because it's been interpreted reasonably. But if we're not getting the information we want, that's the fault of the executive limitation. And that is our responsibility to make sure that it's written in such a way that we are getting the information that we want and need. <sighs> Trainings. To understand all of this stuff and the language that we use, like ends and executive limitations and any policy governance term, um, the VSBA, the Vermont School Board Association, has, um, what are they called, webinars all the time on different topics. You can watch them at any time. They go back years. Um, and I find that they do it in a way that is really accessible. Um, and being able to choose when I do those trainings and how fast I'm receiving the information, I find it really helpful. So I encourage those, um, you to look into them and, and see what information. Um, biggest thing about 
the way this board, biggest things, a few, and, and please add on to these, um, we speak as one voice. Doesn't mean we all agree all the time, um, certainly, and I would hope not. Um, but in terms of that which we um, put out to the public, our votes, our policies, we are one board. When we go out to the public and they, we're in the public because, you know, we are sometimes, um, and someone comes up and asks what we think about a particular topic, they are, this is tricky, it's a small town, it happens all the time, right? But it's important to keep in mind that the board is an entity that you are a piece of, um, but you may not speak on behalf of the board in your own personal voice or opinion. Is that a fair way of putting it? Um, Anne is a wonderful resource, P.S. You'll find me looking to her often when I start talking about policies, uh, kind of with a kind of face. Um, she's a great resource. She, she has a lot of experience in the policy governance um, model, so, and attends trainings often, which I really respect. Um, Speaking of which, yes, please. you are all currently enrolled and invited to look at everything that's in this current policy governance training that the VSBA is doing. Okay, so do there's a this. shared folder. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have gotten an email. If you're having trouble accessing it, let me know. I, I think you've accessed it. So mm -hmm. if you're having trouble accessing it, it should be there. It's in a shared folder. It says policy governance on it. Um, and there are also the, we had, we've had two sessions, one in person that was four hours or so, and they did record that. So if you want to go back and look at that recording, and then they just recorded the one that Ryan just attended. Um, for the new board members, what, what they said was they can listen, but they're, they were like, just let them know that if they have a lot of sort of basic general questions to go to a board member rather than piping up in the training because it's <laughs> supposed to be for board members who are already sort of using policy governance. But I think attending the training is worthwhile even if, even if you're just getting started with it. And you all, ha everyone has on the board also the Getting Started book that sort of gives you kind of an overview of, well, maybe you don't have it yet. Uh, yeah, so. It'll be coming from the VSBA next week. No, that's the essential work we of boards. We have the policy governance model, the essential work, like and like Robert's. Yeah, it's like a textbook. So the other two board members, I'll, I'll that's, that was all that got that was, returned? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we'll work on it in. Yeah. because it, with a board bought a copy for all board members and it's sort of, it's part of the OSUD's materials, so it, like the computer, it should have been returned. So I'll, I'll connect with you and... I don't, know that, I don't know that that was clear when they were handed out. Mm -hmm. Oh. So if that was the intent, I don't think that was made clear and that's fine. Oh. That might be why it wasn't returned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure I don't think they're reading it in their spare time. <laughs> they might be. <laughs> Believe me. So well, I'll, I can follow up with, with uh, Kyle and just make sure they get, get to you folks. Because that gives you an overview of how it all works also. Um, so that would be helpful, I think. Just sort of understanding our system. And then just reading through our, pol I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Reading through the policies, you'll notice that they're very uh, prescriptive, uh, especially the ELs. What's less so are the ends, and this board has been working on sort of further developing the ends. So that will be a project that we'll probably pursue a little bit more with Michael and building off of the uh, portrait of a graduate that we completed last year that Heather um, was pretty heavily involved in. I'm sorry, can you clear the, the portrait of a graduate? It's a portrait of portrait. a graduate. Oh, the portrait of a graduate. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, Heather, you could send that those materials to both Ryan and 
Absolutely. How do I say your name? Emil. It's like Emil. Amelia, but Emil. no A on the end. And you can ask me 55 so, more Emil. times, and that's okay. <laughs> it's like the French Emil. It is, but okay. it's Gaelic. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. Um, yeah, that might be really helpful for them to um, see. Because we did that portrait of a graduate with the idea of trying to, um, one, reach out to the public again, because it had been a very long time since we had looked at our ends and really looked at what is it that we want to have students be able to do by the time they finish in our K-12 system. So this is a summary of the, the goal of yeah, it's um, it's a little bit more specific and a little less. It's not written in N's language, so um, that was one of the things that we were working on was um, sort of. And it's it's much. It has many more um, goals and then sub goals. Would wouldn't you say? Well, the, as that compared to the one. The ends that are in yeah. here now so you that you'll find, but there end, is a committee very... that's working on um, <clears throat> using the portrait of a graduate to perhaps mm -hmm. further develop our ends because yeah. they're very broad. I just shared um, the folder with you with all of the materials. And so you can access the seven pillars and a description of them. We're also using these icons as part of our public relations. So when we say we put up a picture of students doing a community service project, mm. we'll do the hashtag um, caring community member and use the icon that goes along with that. Um, we have a lot more work to do with promoting this and branding it. And in, really, we should be tying our professional development plan to this and we should be tying um, our strategic plan to this like this should be referenced often mm. like we're doing this because it gets us where the community wants our students to be by the time they graduate mm. so I've shared this folder with you and there's a lot of different um, materials in it and you can um, access those and um, use them you know as you work toward uh, in sort of like making the ends more robust Got it. Thank you. My pleasure. Along with, um, I said the speaking as in, in one voice as being a, a, a big thing to keep in mind, open meeting laws are also something you really want to familiarize yourself with. Yes. Um, all of us to be reminded about open meeting laws, especially um, keep this in mind when emailing. Emailing a reply all to an email sent to the entire board constitutes a meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have a response to send to the sender, do not reply all. Just reply to that person. Unless you're doing scheduling. If scheduling, you're scheduling yes. a meeting, that's, that's different. But if it's anything with any board content, board work, you want to stay away from uh, responding to everybody. I'm pr pretty allergic to replying all anyway. So. Good. <laughs> it's a scary thing. I, I've, it's a scary, I've been in scary thing. Too many big corporate settings where you've gotten into the vortex of, hey, don't reply all. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Times one thousand. It's just it's it, the biggest thing is that we are a public body and our work is public. Um, so any business of the board needs to be public unless there is something that we take into executive sessions and there are very strict rules about what we can take into executive session. Um, personnel being one of them, uh, uh, contractual um, issues being another, student issues being another, things that um, would compromise someone's uh, privacy yes. can go into executive session. Um, if there are more that other board members want to... So there are cliff notes on open meeting law in the very back of your binder. Uh, you want a laminated one? Uh, yeah. get a and laminated one. And then we did one. get the laminated um, did you get version that one? through the VSBA. From the VSBA. And we're missing one. Instead of socks this year. So I'm not so, so, It's been a couple of years since uh, the Yeah. Session. 
So mm -hmm. that might be another thing that we'll, because I think that got sent out to board members. Yeah, during the board right, right. So Emil will <laughs> work on getting oh, yeah. one for you. But the, the, the sort of the abbreviated version through um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns is at the very back. Yeah, of the, and that's a great website in general as a resource yeah. if you have questions about mm -hmm. what we're So it gives, gives you some information on that. So as I said, this is an ongoing, um, we, we self-evaluate every meeting um, on a particular board policy. Um, just do homework as your life allows. Um, ask questions while we're in board meetings. I think that's actually really important because I don't know about you guys, but before I joined the board, I had no idea what policy governance was. And I think that's the case for um, many people who haven't served on a policy governance um, board before. So I think it's important that we have these learning moments in public um, so that we're not the only ones learning how it works. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on. I do really try to keep to time, but I'm bad at it. Um, just one more thing before we get to Melinda. Um, election tallying. Rachel, you had asked that this be added to the agenda. Yes. I'm curious. Who is in charge of school district and board elections? What's that? Your clerk. Linda. Linda. So Linda prints our. She arranges prints. She prints our, our, our ballots. Yeah. Um, and then who tallies our ballots? Usually Linda. So Linda's been tallying the ballots with volunteer help that has over the last two years been strictly Braintree people. So, so typically the town clerks of each of the three towns are responsible for finding people to support and be there because the three towns have to bring their ballots to that central location. But as you said, the last few years, people bring the ballots from the towns and then they don't have volunteers to help or stay. So we were there till 1 a.m., close to 1 a.m. Um, on Tuesday night. The second thing is we're also using um, the uh, tabulators in the towns. So we had to wait until I think it was 9.30 before the tabulator machine was ready for us because obviously Randolph was using it for their tabulation. So one of the things that I would propose to the district um, would be as we have um, annual elections and annual, or not elections, annual, we do have annual elections and annual voting on the school budget is for the district to consider purchasing a tabulator uh, that they own for the purpose of tabulating votes um, each year. And that way, that group of people who are coming together to support um, doing that process on Tuesday evenings can actually just get started when the ballots close uh, and not have to wait for the other town machines to be available. And the only towns that have it are Braintree and Randolph. Brookfield does not have a tabulator. Um, and the other thing is it was a lot of um, just having to like, again, things that were very manual because we had to like open up each vote from some of the towns because some towns fold them to put them in their slot into the machine or into their box that they hold them in. So it was a lot of like having to make sure that pages would actually be able to go into the tabulator. Um, so it was a pretty long process for four of us who stayed there till 1 a.m. to do that. And we had fun, which was nice, but, um, but it was just a lot. So my recommendation is that the district purchase its tabulator. Um, do you know what kind of investment that would be? I, Six to seven thousand dollars. Yeah, I think we were, we were that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we do have a, we do do this every year, you know, it's not like it's a one time thing. And we did learn that, um, I think that they only, they don't bring them out on some off years when, like this was a big year because we had the presidential primary. Um, but I think I, we heard that in some years they're not actually, the towns don't bring their, the towns their tabulators, don't bring their tabulators out. 
So is this happening the hand in brain trees? So we bring them yeah. to Randolph because be we use the Randolph machine. Yeah. Right. So and we have to um, commingle all of the. Right. Um, so we actually had to wait. Brookfield was delayed, so we had to first wait for them, and then we had to get all their ballots. And then, like I said, we had to wait almost two and a half hours because we got there right around seven fifteen, um, and then we weren't able to start using the machine, machine till nine thirty. Mm -hmm. um, and then I it's slow. talked to our election officials as I was going through, and I said, "Hey, last year, the our clerk was stuck staying really late. Are you guys going to be helping? Oh yeah, yeah, we're going to help out. Sure. Well, we did so have some. Was interesting. We did have some. I'm in, I mean, interested we had to the, hear this. I think Emory was there. Um, okay. But the thing is, is that the machine itself is slow. You can't. You have to be oh. feeding in one ballot at a time. The older machine that they had was a faster feed, but it would also um, miss feeds, oh. so you'd have to like stop. And so it was always a process. This one's very accurate, but you have to like you feed them one in, you wait, For the you arrow. wait, you wait, beep, you feed another one in. Um, so yeah. starting that process two and a half hours after we yeah. actually could have started it, had we had a machine available, we would have been done at eleven rather than one. Mm -hmm. um, How long? Does an entity usually keep a tabulating machine? Is it like what's the lifespan? What's the lifespan of it? Yeah, I have no idea. Okay. No, I think a... these are relatively. I think the towns have relatively recently adopted. I know we used to hand count brain trees yep. until just a few years ago. Um, what happened to their old one? They never had one. No, I'm or Randolph's old. I think one. the one that misfed when they got the new ones. Mm. Uh, mm. And then I have one. So just just. Thinking about it, um, it is an investment, but again, it's something that we would be using annually. Um, and in a year like this year, we had a lot of votes, um, obviously, because there was a, a significant turnout. How? What's the total vote number? It's about fifteen hundred. I was going to say I think it was like up to close to sixteen, over Ooh. fifteen, yeah. Because we were watching that little number keep cropping up, and we're like, oh, we only have two and a half more hours of this. <laughs> so. Yeah. And who would authorize that purchase? Would it be a vote to the public, or is it something the school board does? It would, I think it would be us. Wouldn't it? So Pardon. you got there's two so, two ways to do it. Is um, if you want to vote to see if there's surplus money at the end of the year, it could come out of that. Um, there is the operational reserve fund, so you could vote to have it come out of there as well. What I would do is I would make a motion to vote for it to come out of surplus if it's available. If not, then allowing us to take it from surplus. Operational. Operational surplus, yeah. And we can't pull it out of because uh, the funds for the school board; those are marked for your, your training, training. training. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Other activities. So it would belong to the district. And then we could rent it out to the towns that don't have it, because we used to we rented it for a couple well, of years. Well, be careful though, because they need it. They would need it. They, I mean, that's but we don't have a school board. We don't have a school board election in November. Oh, Brookfield doesn't true. have a tabulator. Oh. I mean, these are, I mean, it's worth exploring. It's worth continuing conversation around it. I think the alter I think. an alternative is that we don't tally our votes that night. That the school board, school district elections, wait until there's a wait so until Wednesday it. during the day, and so people don't get results until Wednesday. Is there, a, is there a state law that governs when we have to? I'd have to check. I do know that um, there were probably 10 or 11 districts that didn't have their votes the next day because they were still waiting for it to come in from their satellite from towns. Their, yeah, yeah. Um, so some of them it took three days. So I, I'm assuming it's, you know, the count gets done when you get it done, but I can check with Pietro. Yeah, yeah if we're able to wait and save yeah, that money, maybe, that would yeah, be ideal. Just, then my yeah. other. The other consideration, I think, is that we're using the Randolph tabulator for the district's purposes, and that is on on Randolph. So, is there wear and tear on their machine that that they want to consider that that they would want to consider? Do yeah. we if pay they the machine every year? <laughs> does, the, does the school district pay the town of Randolph to use the tabulator? Is that a, a rental or anything? Like that? We were. I wonder if it was before they had. We had a couple of years that we rented. Um, just to speed up the process. Um, so let me check. Be sure. Yeah. 
Well, that would be the other thing. Right. It could be an incentive to purchase one. So I feel like this has been an issue for a couple of years. So I don't want to say, like, let's just keep thinking about this and look into this. I feel like this needs to be resolved in some sense. Like, how are we going to tally our ballots? Well, let's find we out have, what We have them every are. year. So this is not something that we can resolve right now. Can we please put this on the agenda for next month again? Um, can we? Can I, I think it's worth, if we're going to vote on something, I would rather it be next agenda mm -hmm. rather than this, mm -hmm. just so we could maybe have some numbers in front of us. Um, you know, six to seven thousand dollars. If we can have a couple of options, I don't so know. Are there we refurbished make a motion ones? To have Lane uh, research the possibilities of what makes sense. Options. Yeah, options for the district in terms of. And maybe, uh, maybe Linda has. Yeah, I'm happy to look it up anyway. Some suggestions also, since it falls on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ryan. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Lane. Yep. OK. Melinda, you're up. Randolph Elementary School, Melinda Robinson, principal. I don't know if you guys have to accept it. I, I thought it was sharing. It's showing on mine that it's sharing. Oh, God. You have to give her. Um... Do I add her as co host or something? No, she should just be able to do it. You can add, add her as co host, see if it matters, but she should, it should just show up. Oh. It's a, sorry, an error has occurred when screen sharing. Uh, Melinda, do Try me again. log Is out. Now you're co host. Oh, okay. Yeah, log, or log out and log back do in. Do I have to log out? Just uh, reset stuff. Okay. I don't know if the disconnection might have. If not, Todd's still here. Oops, that's hers. That's hers. <laughs> so you need to mute in to your camera. There we go. Sorry. Good job. Okay. All right. Yay. There we go. Good job. Sorry about that. Oops. All right, thank you for having me here. It's great to be able to come and chat with you all about what's happening at Randolph Elementary. Um, last time we were here, we were really chatting a lot about behavior um, struggles that we've been having and some pieces that we were putting into place to try to help with some of the things in the building that would support um, helping with that behavior struggle. Um, so we had an action plan that um, Lane helped us put together, and we have been working on that action plan for the last three months. We had stepped aside, stepped away from some of our um, professional learning community time, our PLC time, and the entire staff at Randolph Elementary, including some of our paras, um, helped on different committees. We talked about what did we feel was the major needs based on that action plan, and the staff really dove into helping to make some solutions to the problem that we had. We had these different committees. We reviewed our policy for restraint and seclusion. That was one thing that we did as a whole staff. We reworked our behavior expectations for major and minor behaviors and really clearly laid that out. And we'd had this in the past, but we had made it more clear. Um, we relaunched our PBIS focus across the school, and PBIS is um, Positive Behavior Intervention System, is what that is. We considered alternative spaces for students in need. We started a student mentoring um, protocol for our older students to mentor our youngers. We solidified the practices for sharing information on student need and plans, and we created a process for reflective practice within the staff. So I thought I'd just unpack some of that for you. The restraints and seclusions. This was what one thing that really drove us wanting to dive into this action plan. It's from the beginning of the year through January 4th, we had 35 what are considered 4,500, those restraints and seclusions. And we knew that that was too high, and we needed to figure out how we could 
um, find alternatives other than restraints and seclusions to help with some of our behavior issues. So um, since then, we've addressed, adjusted some practices around our reset room that help to, I think, um, reset in all of our minds how we can regulate behaviors in, in a different way. We received two half-day trainings um, for all staff on regulation. We had many discussions around approaching students' needs in a proactive way, and these committee, this committee work that we did, I think, also made a big difference on this. Um, we've only had eight 4,500 since January 4th, and only three since our last training that happened in February. Um, we debrief after each needed restraint or seclusion, and I think we've grown in our practice around that. We did a big reboot of our PBIS um, focus here in the building. All of our fifth and sixth graders um, got together and created skits and um, led the discussion on what should be po the positive behavior in each section of our building, from the classroom to the hallway to the cafeteria to everything that you can think of. And then we had in early February, our students did um, stations throughout the buildings where our fifth and sixth graders were leading the students in that Could you, station. Did you touch the yeah, just touch the Cancel. 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 There we go. Um, and it was just fun to see the big kids taking the lead on that. And I think they were pretty proud of that. Um, and it's made a difference. The, it helped to really reestablish what our expectations were across the building. This was that major minor um, revisit that we did. It's really a flow chart from mm -hmm. if for mi minor behaviors, we really clearly defined again what minor behaviors were, what would happen in the classroom, who is responsible for each of those pieces, and then we clearly defined what was a major behavior and um, went through the protocols and the flow chart of how we would handle those major behaviors. Um, it was very informative for that, that committee, and then they shared it out with the whole staff. So it was great work from that committee. We had a committee that worked on mentoring, decided that um, they'd like to see some of our olders really serving as mentors for our younger students in areas where they might need some help regulating. So for example, we have reading buddies for some students that were struggling with just staying focused and staying on task during their reading time. We've established some reading buddies social emotional games and modelings to just really teach, help to teach our younger students how it is to play a game, how it is to take turns and share. Um, we have lunch and recess buddies, we have pack up at the end of the day help, we have prep breakfast together in the morning, run walk partners. It's been really fun and we have a great protocol now for the, fifth, the, for the youngers to really um, put out a plea to the fifth and sixth grade teachers. They set up with their kids who's going to be the mentors and they have the process in place. Right now we have, I think, 12 fifth and sixth graders that are serving as mentors and many that would like to, so we're still working through that. Um, reflective practice was another piece that one committee decided they really wanted to look at and that is really helping some of our staff who might be having stress after, um, like stress, comes with this profession. <laughs> um, it comes with having our students sometimes needing more regulation than others. And this is a process that we're putting into place to have really um, mentors within on the staff that will help to um, be a sounding board for um, a staff member who might be feeling stressed, might be just needing some support on how to manage a situation, and the and to support those staff in really building a relationship with the students and with the rest of the staff, it really is building that community feel. That you, it's, you're not alone in this stressful moment. You have a group around you that can help you with that. Um, that was really, are there any questions on the, where we went with the action plan? I, because I'm moving on to other things now, I just wonder if you have any questions from the last time I was here in my, more on that. All right, I'll go on to the fun stuff. All right. our, our PTO has been really engaged um, for the last two years. We started at the beginning of last year and they have just been amazing. They've, we, we do an event almost every single month for the family to invite people in from the outside or do something that supports 
they do something that supports our school in some way. For example, tonight we had March Madness where we invited the varsity players in to play with our kids in the gym. And it's, it, they've been very, very well attended. Our, our mini golf night had like probably 130 people here. Many, many families came. And we've been doing things almost every single month, and it's fun. We've had a couple of movie nights with over 70 people at each one, and they've been fun. Our upcoming events are we're having a great an April raffle event, which is helping to fund. Um, the PTO really wanted to be able to help fund our Teacher Appreciation Week, which is our next big thing that we'll be doing. May 3rd, we're going to be doing our first ever dance party at RES, um, and we'll be pulling raffle winners at that time. Uh, the week of May 6th, the PTO is going to be um, working diligently on our Teacher Appreciation Week, which really is an appreciation for all the staff. It's not just for our professional mm -hmm. teachers, it's the entire staff in the building. And then June 14th, they're planning on helping with our field day support. Um, I need some, some thoughts from you. Since we last met, um, we had been talking about our uh, rebranding for our mascot. We, um, you all agreed that we could have Wizards is still one of the votes that the students would be able to vote on. It was an overwhelming vote, um, two to one, to keep Wizards as our, um, as our mascot. And since then, we've had a, our enrichment art group are um, trying to help build a logo for our, to like rebrand our logo for Wizards. And we really have focused on the idea that Wizards is not about the magical piece, but it's more about that definition that you helped us think about, um, Anne, I think when we were here last time, focusing on that definition of wizards as an expert at what they do, and really focusing on how to become an expert, you have to work hard, you have to study hard, you have to do all you can to be the best at what you can do. The, the committee of students has come up with three thoughts for the logo. They still really wanted to um, keep the hat, but they were trying to re-image the hat so that it looked more cartoon-like and more of a um, like more of a Walt Disney type hat. But they wanted to have they had many different iterations, but they finally came up with three po final possible pieces where it would be that um, cartoon wizard hat on top of books. That idea that. We're, we're trying to become wizards and learn in our learning. So um, what we would like to know from you is if you feel comfortable with us continuing with the wizard hat piece of the logo, or if you would like them to completely step away from that wizard hat idea. And for the information for those new board members, one of the concerns around the wizard mascot was that wizard hat that it could bring up the image of the Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizards, and the, the there's some imagery that shows Grand Wizards with a hat that looked a, somewhat like our wizard hat. So, um, well, it's a pointed hat. Yeah, it's I a mean, pointed hat. Yeah. So, that's what I would love to know from you all is if you feel comfortable with us carrying forward with the icon with a hat in this way. Do we discuss now? Is this I mean, that's that's part of you bringing it to yeah, our attention, I'd love right? To have it discussed in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. it, it strikes me that this the illustration, especially the one in the upper right, um, really embodies that that fantasy archetype of a wizard very well. Um, I don't think that it's reasonable to mistake that for anything problematic. Um, it looks like an arcane uh, wizard hat to me with that really embodies everything you discussed of, you know, encapsulating the knowledge and delving deep into expertise. I, I would have a very hard time finding something inappropriate with that. And personally, I love it. I think it's, it's charming and uh, I think that I, when I walked in today and I saw them, the wizard iconography on the... Uh, Hanging up, I thought it was really fun, and I think that's a great mascot. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other concerns or thoughts? Or? 
Um, no concerns. I mean, I think it's great that the kids are so enthused and engaged with this. So I personally would hate to do anything to derail that oh, yeah. um, enthusiasm moving forward. Uh -huh. uh, and they're feeling kind of so, they're really owning this mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. Are you still hearing feedback from your school community about um, feeling marginalized or threatened by any of the? We have it at all. Okay. I, I never personally have at all, no. Even prior to us thinking about rebranding, so. Um, I don't have an issue with any of these. I do want to acknowledge that I think it was a really great process to go through. I think especially for adults um, being kind of forced or being asked to recognize that imagery, however you know far off one may think it is like, oh, I never thought of that, someone might. Yeah. So I think I'm all about learning moments tonight. But I think it's a really good one, I think, uh, along with you know, someone in a hood riding a horse. It, it's mm -hmm. it's important that people acknowledge and recognize and hear um, that that can have an effect on people and to see what can be done to fix it. Like the curl at the top and also the fact that the name of the school is also a bend, I think really mm -hmm. helps. Mm -hmm. it, everything's very rounded, which I think it, it really works against what yeah. the problem was with um, Thank you. The, the, the other shape of a... It looks like our PTO what? is bringing you food. Uh -huh. oh, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> That's lovely. Wow, thank, um, you. thank you. I, I'd like to speak briefly to the policy for non-discriminatory mascots and school branding. I, I, I like the image uh, personally, and can I want to can ask you... Them before they... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. For all that you do, not just the sweets. Okay. Um, it's very clear that um, the likeness feature symbol uh, traditions, um, it shouldn't be connected at all to gender or to a certain type of person. So I want to ask, with this, will there ever be another image of an old white man wearing that hat in the school? Or is that now, that hat's for hmm. any child to wear? That would be for anyone. And we've taken out the image, we, we had heard that we are taking out the imagery of any people involved in it. Perfect. So, yeah. Perfect, because I think that if that becomes a symbol that a chi any child feels they, mm -hmm. could, they could own, right. then I think we're compliant. But if it, we keep seeing like the adult man, sure. Absolutely. elderly man wearing that yep. hat, it yep. be, it's not. Yeah, and I think we want to make it. sure it's gender neutral. Yes. As much as we, that Thank you anybody that. can be a wizard. It's mm -hmm. not, there's no gender involved in that. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. If there is no concern, then what w the next step would be is the, um, the, leader, the student leadership committee will actually be putting it out for a vote on the um, three icons for them to vote on. Yes. And then we'll move forward from there. We're excited about it, so. Um, I did want to give you just a little bit of an update on our progress for our academic progress. Um, we do our Track My Progress test three times a year, and on that um, we have the colors that you'll see on here. You'll see some yellows, you'll see some blues, you'll see greens, and you might even see reds. Let's hope not. Um, the blues and greens Blue is on grade level, the expectation. Um, green is above grade level. You've got yellow that's close to grade level, and red would be below. And these are our percentile scores from fall and winter for um, the last round of testing that we have. And, and this is, you're seeing math. So at this point, all but our fourth and sixth grade are listed as um, on grade level for our percentile score for math. So um, any, oh God. any guesses as to, to what's going on with that? I'm not or? sure because actually the funny thing is is our fourth grade, which were last year's third grade, were extremely high scoring on our Cognia test. So I'm not sure why there was that dip, <laughs> that, um, dip in fourth grade. Sixth grade is an interesting year. It's a brand new set of domains that they use 
they are looking at some things that they've never looked at in math before. When you hit sixth grade, it's a new set. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting new set. Would you say that's the same with fourth grade, too? Does fourth grade... No, it's a very much that? third grade. No. Fourth grade builds so clearly onto third onto grade. They're third just... Grade. So I'm not sure what was happening with the, third gra the fourth grade. It was unusual, very unusual. Um, our ELA is one area that you'll see we're yellow in most of our grades except for grade three. It is something that we are working as a whole school on. And interestingly enough, across the OSSD, other, er other schools have sometimes struggled with the math and they've been doing really well with the reading. Historically, for the last few years, uh, we've flipped. It seems like the reading is more of a struggle for us than math, and I'm not sure why that is. We've worked really hard on the science of reading to get the, um, the word study time, the, the really looking at breaking apart words and thinking through it, but somehow it's not making the connection that we're hoping to make. So it's something that's going to be a major focus for us in the upcoming year is to really hone in on what is it that we need to do for reading to make that a priority in our school. Since yeah, the, it's, it's funny because the literacy piece is a problem across the state right now. Interesting. <laughs> so they're uh, in the legislative session that's happening, they're actually starting to put in some mm -hmm. ground rules and get some ideas that will be rolled out statewide probably in the great. next year. So. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think it's so something it's not we'll unusual. just need to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, forgive me, is this percentile score for the state? It is for, um, it is a norm referenced across anybody who's ever taken this track, My Progress, and it's taken um, largely across Vermont, but it's in other states as well. Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, sorry, I, you, what did you say blue and green were? Blue and green, blue is above grade level, I'm sorry, blue is at um, average grade level. Green is above grade level. Um, yellow is nearing proficiency, but not um, not at grade level nearing proficiency. And then red would be below, well below proficiency. Okay. So. And it's an interesting test because it gets harder each time they take it yeah. across the course of the year. Yep. Right, because they expect them to have learned more halfway mm -hmm. through the year and then by. Lynn, Lynn's going to pick on me here because of my eyes, but so is that blue or is that green? That right one there? is a, it's blue. So that's okay. a, I don't think we had any that were green. That, that would be mm -hmm. meaning that that grade okay. level was scoring Got it. well so, above proficiency. And the and, yeah. previous page, yeah. those were? Those were all blue. The, well, actually, I'm sorry, second grade I think is a green. Is it blue? Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, but take a, this the is an interesting either. one. Leave that up there for a second. <laughs> What's that? Take, take a look at where the blues jumped in, right? They're in the earlier grades. What program did we build over the Preschool. last school? There you go. Yeah, it's made a, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, I can get those to, I, if you want, I can email them to you so you can see them better. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even trying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just have this going joke that, yeah. that my eyes are going <laughs> faster. Um, what was the preschool program implemented? Um, depending upon which building you were at, mm -hmm. um, I think it was two years before COVID. I think it's been in place for about five years yeah. now, depending upon the mm -hmm. school. And so one of the, there were a couple of reasons for it. One of them was the kids were coming in, you know, kindergarten and first grade without a lot of the, the pre-academic skills that you would expect them to have, um, typically from the home, you know, being able to count to 10, being able to recite the alphabet, um, as well as the social skills. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the preschool that we've built, um, they've slowly been doing more and more work on the academic side of things um, to make sure that the kids are prepared. And so kind of what you're seeing across there is that's the extent of where the preschool kids have gotten in the time since we built the program. Immediate results. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's getting them to a good start. The other thing that it does is we were having a lot of students with speech issues. Mm -hmm. It's Yes. And so this was allowing us to identify them early yeah. and start to actually doing work to resolve those issues before, you know, they got in the later grades. Yes. And then it's much more difficult mm -hmm. because speech is an acquired skill over time. Mm -hmm. And if you've acquired it improperly and you're reinforcing it and reinforcing it and reinforcing it, um, in later grades, it's very hard to, to fix and reverse. It's an exciting time of year to sit in on all of the IEP meetings <clears> because there's so many right now where the kids that were um, identified as speech and language impaired are getting by like 
first and second grade are no longer needing it, that they are testing out, and it's only because of that early intervention that's happening in preschool. So, um, I wanted to share with you that cognia testing is starting now, which is our state um, test that we take. Um, this week and next week, we're doing ELA um, across third through six, and the week of March 25th, we have our fifth grade science. It's the only air, um, grade in the school that does science testing. And the weeks of April 8th and 15th are, are math testing. Um, those ELA and math, both of them have two sections each, and they can take anywhere from two to four days, sometimes for some of the kids that takes longer. They're not timed on their test. They can take quite a while if they need to. So. Um, and that was Why it. is science only only in fifth? They do it fifth and eighth and fifth, eleventh. Fifth and eleventh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And they're doing. We talked a little bit about this when it comes to you know talking about ends in in especially in future years. They're doing the testing a month and a half earlier than they usually yes, do it. Yes, that'll be interesting. So <laughs> being able to compare this data to previous years will be difficult, but being able to compare it to the rest of the state should still be okay because everybody's taking it around yeah. the same time. Yeah, we're a little nervous about it happening so early. When you think about a third of the year, still a th year's learning hasn't happened yet. So, hmm. But we'll see. Um, Classic. Do you guys have, I don't think you for my, um, any, <laughs> anything you want me to clarify or any questions you have for Randolph? Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for pulling you. double duty. I know it's you were right. there and down here. Um, left them hanging up there, but they're all right. We got um, thank you. That was great, Melinda. Thank you very much. Good night, Melinda. Oh, my God. Quarterly facilities monitoring report. I, it's bad. I think. Another pair. I give it to you. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, do you yeah, want to talk. take us through? Yeah. About that. So this is, um, if folks have the packets, th this is this sheet, and I'll give a kind of an overview of what this uh, is. Yeah. Um, there was not w what we call dual control um, on a lot of the funding and stuff that was being spent on facilities uh, when I started 100 years ago now. Um, and so this was an attempt to actually provide some of that dual control. So what happens right now is that anything that's over about $7,000 um, that facilities is working on, they actually put on this form. Um, they'll talk about and go out and get their estimates. They'll put down what the estimates are when the project is done. They'll put out the final costs. And then what happens is uh, somebody from central office, whether it's me, whether it's Heather, or whether it's Rob, we go out and do a direct inspection and make sure, right, if they purchased equipment, that we actually have the equipment here. If um, they're saying that repairs were done, that the repairs were actually done. Um, and so it's a, it's a control that way. Um, the other thing it also does is it, it looks out a few years in terms of what the priorities are. Um, for maintaining the district and making sure that the, the, the proper work is being done um, to kind of protect our, our, our facilities assets. Um, and so it gives an idea of kind of, you know, what we're working on right now versus, you know, what we're holding off on for a couple of years. Um, a couple of things to point out if we're looking on this, and there's actually two things that are missing on here that I'll, I'll talk with them about for the next report, um, is uh, security equipment. It's like the fifth one down. Um, floor, floor locks and go buckets, um, that's going to be a reserve request. Um, they've been doing a really good job uh, revamping their kind of emergency preparedness. Um, you know, re-looking at Alice, uh, making sure the, the staff and the, the students are trained and going through and doing their multi-option, um, what do you call it, drills. Um, and so they've identified that they do want go buckets in the classrooms, right? It's a place if you're locked in the classroom for a long time that the kids can actually go to the bathroom and they're usually stocked with supplies as well. Um, the door locks, um, what those are is it's a, it's a little slot that's actually put into the floor and there's a little crossbar that drops into the slot. That way um, the door is secured and nobody can open it. And so we'll be asking for some money for that. It'll be probably rather expensive. My guess is it'll probably be in the eighty to ninety thousand dollar range to do this for the entire district. Um, so that'll be up and coming. Um, are, you gonna, are you gonna do that in the elementary schools too? Yeah, I'll, yeah. every yeah. every door, every yeah. It, it makes it so that some if someone steals an access key, they don't work. Oh. Yeah. Right. You have a second way to barricade that's fast 
and secure. Yeah. It's attached to the back of the door, mm -hmm. like uh, a. It's a. It's a slot. Like a bolt. So yeah. if it, if this is where the door opens, it's a slot in the floor, and it's a metal piece that fits into the slot and sticks up. So if you try to open the door, it's going to push against the slot and you can't get it open. But the metal piece is attached to the door and you just kick it Yeah, down. it's going to need to be on like a, a chain way up high on the door so that the kids can't run off with them. Oh, yeah. good point. Is the, big, is the big piece. So that's the piece we've been talking about. Right. It's, it's a redundant measure to really make the classroom secure. Yeah. Um, because the, the Alice is interesting. I mean, they talk about, you know, using your belt to secure the door and this and that. But... You know, if you're in a high stress situation and trying to ma manage a bunch of nervous kids, yeah. um, this is just, this is a two second, you drop it in there and you're done. Um, so that, that'll be coming. There's a, a green shed that's out uh, back by the sugar house. Um, it's not in OSHA compliance um, with the stairway that goes down into the basement that's there. Mm -hmm. um, so to get that into compliance, it's gonna cost about $10,000. The shed is used by um, ag. Um, they store a lot of their equipment and things in there. They don't actually, it's not like a classroom space, it's more storage. Um, but right now the way things are is, you know, based on OSHA requirements, it's, it's not safe for the students to be in there. So it's been, been kind of shut off until the work gets done. So that may or may not be a, a reserve request. Um, the other piece uh, that will be coming this way is if you remember at the beginning of the year, we had the main water line coming in from the Randolph water that went into the building. Um, it was a patch. So it was not, you know, a full repair. Um, so that'll be a reserve request to actually replace that water line. Um, and that's going to be difficult because it runs under half of the school building's foundation. So they're literally going to have to drill in from the side of the school underneath um, adjacent to the current pipe and put in a new pipe and try to get it connected. Not on here. Yeah, no, they've got to put it on. That's one of the ones they do. The, the last two things um, that they're gonna, they'll need to put on here, um, and just as my time is winding down to make sure that it's on people's minds as well, is we do have the wood chip boiler um, that was put in um, and was used for a number of years um, that is now defunct. Um, that is something, depending upon what happens with the potential for building a new school, that that either needs to be removed um, or, you know, potentially replaced if a new school is built as a way to kind of bring down costs a little bit. Um, but it was meant, to, uh, it was a giant boiler system that burns wood chips um, and it was meant to heat the RTCC high school complex. Um, it has been sitting there. We've had folks come in and look at it just before COVID and there's no way to repair it. It was built by a specialty company um, and so there's no way to get the parts for it. Um, and the cost of manufacturing the parts that we need is above and beyond what it would cost probably just to replace the thing. But there's probably five or ten tons worth of steel there that's probably worth something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, th things to talk about. The last uh, piece in the facilities, unless there's questions, is um, they did complete uh, the osmotic system um, up at uh, Brookfield. Um, so they have their own drinkable water now. Um, it worked. It worked, it worked, worked exceptionally yay. well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, there's an ongoing cost that's associated with that. Um, yeah. what, what is that? Is it, is it super it Might be 90000 a year. 90000 I mean, a year? Yeah. But the, the water there, even with the new well, was absolutely right. Horrible. Right, I yeah. remember, and we already dumped a bunch of money into that, so yeah. at least this is working. Yep. Yeah. But it's ninety grand a year just to have it. Very quickly, what was the problem with the water? Oh, it's a. It's actually. It's a good. It's what a good, wasn't the problem? It's with a water. good question. <laughs> um, without getting into politics and things like that, uh, they. It, it's undrinkable. The levels of uh, salinity and a couple of other non-toxic um, solids that are in the water um, are incredibly high. It's like 4,000 parts per million. Uh -huh. um, you know, anything above 150 is considered hard water. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it, it won't kill you, but it's not palatable either. Um, yeah. If you had tasted it, um, I actually did a little, little sip of it. It was four hours to get the taste out of your mouth. It was oily, greasy, salty. Um, and it had been that way for, for nine years. Um, when I came in, um, one of the, I don't remember who it was at this time, one of the Brookfield board members sheepishly kind of brought it up and said, did you know about the water there? Huh. And so we had an engineering crew come in um, and they put in a three-step 
process for us to try to repair it. The first was to try to repair the current well. You know, the question was is um, because the salinity was going up over time, was you know was leachate getting in from the road salts on the road? Um, that didn't look like what the problem was. Um, it looked like they had uh, internally tried to fix the the water problem by putting in a water softener. Water softener has to backwash salty water to recharge, and it looks like the way that they put the piping in, it was discharging into the well. Oh, good. Um, which explained why the salinity was going up. So we tried we tried sealing off uh, the sides of the well all the way down to the bottom, so the water was only coming in from the deepest part. Um, we drained the heck out of it. It did make some improvement, but it still wasn't palatable. Um, the second piece that they recommended was, uh, you know, drilling a new well. Yeah. So we had the state geologist come out, and we drilled that a few years ago. Um, that water was just as bad, and it had radium in it. Um, yep. And so the third piece is what we just did was the osmotic. So each step was a little bit more expensive, but we followed the steps that the, the engineer had put in. But they've got drinkable water now, um, which is great. Um, so we were able to shut off uh, bringing in the bottled water. Well, that's very funny. So I just, how much I, did I, it cost to bring in the bottled water? Oh, I'm sure that probably was. I, I'm giving was you an estimate. Was that more than the ninety thousand? Oh, oh no. Yeah. My my guess is it was probably five or six hundred a month um, oh. at the time. Yeah, but you also there is no usable water there. I mean, you also have to think about the kitchen. Right. You have to think and about wasn't all the it having an impact on the pipes and yeah. everything else? The, all so, the, yes. all the mean, pipes were replaced. As part of this project, mm -hmm. well, we drank that for six great years. But <laughs> the teachers, the teachers, because they weren't weren't supplied with bottled waters, the teachers used to fill up the jugs and bring them in. Do you remember it? You guys were kids. I mean, it was I, terrible. I went to Brookville Elementary. I don't remember it. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised by this. I'm wondering, like, did the well degrade over time? You know, there was there was testing from nine years prior to my start. I think it was the first year that uh, myself and the new facilities team took a look at this, um, the salinity level had doubled over that time. Okay. Um, so it was at 2,000 parts per, and then it was it was uh, like 4,000 or 4,400 okay. um, after nine years. So it was going up over time. But again, the engineer said it looks like the backwash from the uh, yeah, water softener they put in was, was part, part of the problem was it was backwashing into it. But nice. even at 2,000 parts per million, it was still undrinkable. You remember that? I remember it not tasting good. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything apart from that. So but that, that, was, that was a huge project. Um, it took them, <clears throat> took them two, two, two and a half years to get the Jeez osmotic Louise. in. Well, that's what it's yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, OK, I'm, I'm moving us along, because we're like an hour behind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The second review and possible approval of EL reports 2.3 and 2.6. Um, we had our first read last month. Does anyone have questions, concerns, additional comments about either of these? We'll start with 2.3, financial conditions and activities. No, 2.6, asset protection. No, nothing. All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to approve um, both, if someone's comfortable with that. So moved. Moved by Katya. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Emil seconds. By the way, someone told me to think of it as a meal, like the one that you eat. If anyone needs that hint. That's actually good. It's stuck with me. Julia Hutchinson was the one who gave me that one. Um, uh, further discussion. Actually, on topic. None. OK. All those in favor, raise your hand or say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Great. Passes unanimously. Um, okay, we're going to assess our compliance with board governance policy 4.0, which is pretty, I'm not going to say broad, but it's, you know, the overview of what we're doing here. 
Um, the purpose of the board on behalf of Braintree, Brookfield, and Randolph is to see to it that the Orange Southwest School District A achieves appropriate results for students at an appropriate cost, as specified in board's ends policies, and B avoids unacceptable actions and situations as prohibited in board executive limitations policies. Kind of consider this our thesis statement for what we're doing here. Um, you know, when I was thinking about it, I, I kind of felt like, well, this is rating if we have a purpose in being here. So hard to give a low rating there. Exactly. Me. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, board executive limitations. You know, one that came up recently, we talked a little bit about conflict of interest and how it's especially tricky in a small um, population when everybody knows everybody. Um, but we just need to be as transparent as we can and review what our limitations are so we know what we need to be transparent about. Usually when we go over these, I'll just tell the two of you that it's a meatier conversation. But again, this one is, I mean, if you don't think we're doing this, why are we here? Right? Fair? Yep. OK, great, Rachel. Moving on. Good, we're moving. Um, oh, policy update, B5, unlawful harassment, as my dad used to say. First read. <laughs> so this is um, I'm kind of one of the, the more final projects I'm, I'm working on is you've got your policies, um, so I'm reviewing them against you know, what's mandated by the state. So this is a mandated policy. We currently have it in place. Um, but uh, it's been updated by uh, the legal counsel with the Vermont School Boards Association. Um, there's not a substantive change um, between what we have and what this is, but this language is much more specific and usable. Um, so this is, it, this is one that I would ask the board to consider updating. Um, and part of it is I'm also, some of these require a protocol to be developed around them about how we operationally you know, put them into effect. So I'm making mm. sure those protocols are all up to date and the ones that are missing have been filled in. So. And we updated the correct contacts. There are some updated, there are some updated, updated contacts, contacts. Yeah. on the current uh, adopted. And I'll just add, this is the first read, so um, we, we're not voting on it or anything like that. Um, the Any reference to gender is neutralized. I know we're trying to do that in everything that we're putting out now, so I just want to keep myself in check and thank you for that yeah neutralized it sounds clear does anyone have any initial questions okay then I'd ask that um, we're gonna have a second read next time so um, go over it come up with uh, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, um, or all or none of the above. Okay. So would this policy need to be updated any time we have a change in the principle of the schools that are listed? Yeah, so I've got a, a grid, and that's something I can hand off. Um, it lists which policies have things that need to be updated yearly on it. So like this is one that would have a checkbox in there to know that, yeah, we got to go in and make sure that if there's been any personnel changes, we got to, yeah. And those changes well, aren't substantive, so the board wouldn't need to vote on those ones in particular. But there's something that we know is probably a job for Kyle. <laughs> I get to pick on here. We have EL 2.9 that basically says that's his job. He's got to update, make sure everything is updated and that we approve it. And we're approving this because it's a required policy. It's not, this isn't, this is a district policy required by the state that he's implementing. Um, and we keep track and make sure that he's implementing all the state policies through our policy 2.9, EL 2.9. Thank you. Um, we need to assign signing authority in absence of the superintendent. Yeah, so this is, um, and there's a couple of months. 
Um, but I've got seven or so weeks of vacation um, that I'll be taking at the end. Um, so my last day will probably be, I added it up, I think my last physical day in the district is, is probably March 17th, or not March, May 17th, um, through July July 1st. So, just but what, yeah, what, <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the position um, comes down to the signing authority, um, and so that is something that the board, you know, during that that time span, would want to assign to somebody to be able to take that over. Um, basically, what you need to do is decide who um, vote on it, and then um, I can take the minutes from that meeting and I send it to the secretary of education, and then they know that this is the proper person. Um, and you can limit it in time span. It would go from March 20th until May. June May. or May, May 20th. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. Um, May 20th until June 30th. Yes. I'm assuming that it would make sense to have that be our assistant superintendent. She has, you, you should have the license. She's the one that has the license for it. Yeah. 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 So do we have to make a motion then, obviously, on this one? Yeah, it would need to be voted so that it's reflected in the minutes because so, I have to pass that off to the secretary. Um, I move to have Heather, our assistant superintendent, um, have signing authority in the absence of, of our superintendent from May 20th, 20th through June 30th. June 30th. No second. Seconded by Rachel. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes unanimously. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Um, may I um, respectfully request that the board would consider a stipend for me to cover those six weeks? Yes. Um, I the difference in our salaries um, is approximately um, six hundred and eighty dollars per week. I'd like to request five hundred per week for six weeks for your consideration or any amount that you think is suitable as a gesture of respect for the additional um, work that may come. I mean, <laughs> it is the so end of the a, year. It's a busy season. It is, mm -hmm. you know, all of the graduations. Um, I will um, attend hiring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hiring. Yes. So mm -hmm. if the board would consider that, I would appreciate it. What you could do is um just as a recommendation, is if the board is so inclined, um, would be to maybe get a couple of people together to sit down and just have a talk, you know, with Heather and mm -hmm. kind of work out what seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So, yeah, the, w why don't we propose to put? Yep, yeah, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, finan financially, how do how do we? Where does that come from? Where do we? Pull the money. Just talk with Robin. It, it, there's there's money to cover. Okay. It's a small yeah. amount, and uh, with it being the end of the budget, we have anticipated there's surplus. Right. So it would be. Um, so I maybe put it on the agenda for next month. Yeah. I mean, do you think maybe sitting down, yes. you, a couple of us, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, to to talk specifics, so I'd like to. Are there a couple people? I'm going to throw myself in there. Katya, I see you, um, Heather. If you're comfortable with that, then the three of us could maybe sit down. Could I uh, get a motion for yeah. us to be a? I'm, I move that uh, Katya and Hannah. Meet with Meet Heather. With Heather. <laughs> To discuss an interim. To discuss um, a stipend yeah. or a, an agreement around her serving in an interim capacity. Just I think. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Sam. Further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimously passes. We shall find a, a time to Thank you. meet in person. Awesome. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, oh, we're almost caught up. Uh, <laughs> legislative update. That, that was the entire superintendent's report? Yes, yeah. indeed. Unless there's question. Probably the uh, only thing of real note there 
uh, was that they are starting to work forward on a master plan for renovating um, buildings. And the one that will impact us the most out of that was the, uh, the fact that they're just going to potentially suspend the PCB testing. Oh, so, okay. we, so they're pulling us off the list. Yeah, they can't afford to do the work. <laughs> right, that's right. That's great. So we'll just that's hope sweet. that there's nothing going on. Yeah. But most of that is pretty self-explanatory in there, and it, it'll change as they, they work their way, you know, through the next couple of months. Um, the, the laws and the bills will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did internal testing ourselves. Thank you for all of this. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. we did um, does anyone have any questions about uh, Lane Superintendent report? I thought the career, the tech, the pre tech was interesting, especially when we met in the middle schools. Or but you'll middle, notice that the they. Middle grades, but they included six, which I thought was interesting too, for our district yeah, especially. But they didn't include a funding mechanism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just make it happen. Yep. Make it work. But well, we've already got pre-tech. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was good. All right. Well, we've come upon the consent agenda. We have minutes from our regular Valentine's Day meeting. <laughs> we. It was it lovely. It was lovely and romantic. Um, minutes from the annual meeting. Uh, facility reserve funds request. Well, let's go we'll stop uh, there and just. So it's gonna it's gonna have to go out to bid. We're just trying to get the money available. Mm -hmm. um, it's for the go. three elementaries. We've been going through and updating the PA systems, um, and this is to get these ones updated as well. That's a safety concern yeah. um, to make sure that they can connect with everybody in the building if they need to if there's an emergency. Um, uh, high school, RTCC, and I think Brookfield. Excuse me. Yeah, Brookfield is being well. The high school and RTCC have already been done, mm -hmm. um, but Brookfield was the first one, and then we realized that the you know, we should take a look at our yes and uh, brain tree as well. Okay. Any questions on that reserve fund request? Okay, and then the teachers' contract. RTCC. You have that in your thing. Hold on. Boop. Who's the body? Marty McDowell. Oh, yeah. That's for Jeremy Layford replacement. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good. So is that something we also know? I mean, if they're going to. Well, hiring the, it doesn't matter. That's public knowledge. They're allowed to even have copies of the contracts if it's one. Yeah, this is, so did folks hear what the hiring contract is? Yeah. Jeremy Layford's replacement right. at RTCC? Mm -hmm. It's a work-based learning coordinator. He, he um, thank you. Heather. He does hold education licenses uh, to teach, um, not in as work-based learning coordinator, but he's highly qualified as an educator with master's degrees and certifications. So he has a. We've gotten him a provisional to be a work-based learning coordinator. Um, and when does he have a time limit on when he has to get a non-provisional license? They have two years. Okay. Um, however, um, this is just oh, for She's hitting on what we're going to talk about later tonight. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying this is, we're, we're hiring him at this time on an emergency, yeah. and so we will be posting the job. Um, and we may very well hire him for next year as well, in which case then he would be um, have two years okay. to complete the required courses. Oh, so he's coming in now? No, yeah. oh, immediately, oh, yeah. He's already now. here. This oh. is for the remainder oh. of the year. Yeah. We're just it's retroactive. Oh. It's yeah. March 4th. This is, is like a critical need for the rest started. of the year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the provi provisionals, um, they have to put a plan together on how they're going to meet the standards of having a, a regular educator's license. They've got two years to get the work done. If they are not making progress on it, um, the AOE will pull their provisional license, and we'll be talking about that later today. Yeah. <laughs> so if um, no one has questions or concerns about any um, part of the consent agenda, I'll entertain a motion for the whole kit and caboodle. I have a phenomenal oh, one. Please. I always have I love those. I, I was at the um, annual meeting just online. Mm -hmm. I'm not listed as a board member present. So. Oh, you and Rachel were we there. Were, we were both remote, yeah. Online. Oh. So they, they can accept, they can accept it with that change. Yeah. Yes. 
where I'm going to find it. Always love to see people. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda with um, uh, correction. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Seconded by Sarah, moved by Katya. I'm going to give Kyle a moment just to. Who else attended? Uh, the others were all there. So it was Hannah, it's Rachel, Ann, and then myself. And Rachel and I were both remote. Hannah and Ann were in person. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Thank yeah, you so we have a motion to accept the entire consent agenda with that correction from Katya and seconded by Sarah. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor, aye and hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Now, what's this say here about Peter stepping Peter, down? Peter Allen's step down. Stepped down. Kelly, Kelly Green, Green is, uh, is in. Moderator. It's just for moderator for that. It lasts like 15 minutes. He's been, doing he's been there for a I know. <laughs> I know. And he's very professional in how he does he it. He is. Um, in close, superintendent's report we discussed financials. Financials. Uh, okay. They're in good shape at this point in time. We should have spent about 66% of the overall budget. We've only spent 49%, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. Um, we should be well in the in the black. It looks like we'll probably have somewhere between an 800,000 or a million dollar surplus. A little bit less than than we've had in previous years because the grant funding is starting to dry up. But, yeah. Um, uh, another good amount. The only other other piece that I would say while we're on this one is um, in terms of the superintendent's report, we talked about this at cabinet today. Um, we are probably as, as long as you know there's not the board isn't you know set against it, um, are going to talk to the community tomorrow about having a half day on April 8th for the eclipse. Um, because a lot of the staff are, have oh. already kind of put in personal days and stuff and um, Vicki yeah. Johnson's been doing a lot of planning with the students to try to go to a, a good location and whatnot. Oh, so. It's going to be cloudy. We all know it's going to be cloudy. Yeah, yeah we right. talked about that right. today, too. Right. For sure, or whatever. Well, but, right, just and in you've case. heard that like 250,000 people are supposedly mm -hmm. going yeah. to be... Well, they didn't check the weather. It's April in Vermont. Come on. It sounds like a 7% cool. Right, so meteorologist said that. He looked back, he was like, yeah. 70%. I just want to take a minute and celebrate the fact that we were not one of the 39 or 40 oh, budgets yeah. in the state that did not pass. Yeah. Um, so, so publicly, thank you, community, and mm -hmm. um, for those who, who talked about the budget and, and worked on the budget, um, yay. Mm -hmm. This is because <laughs> oh, oh, many didn't. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think the way you presented really well done. Is is really well done. Absolutely. Really, really accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah those yeah. letters were great. Yeah, the commu really community's always stepped up. So. Yeah. I think Mike Clark, too, in his uh, mm -hmm. presentation to the community, noted how generous the taxpayers are oh. in this community in passing budgets. Yeah. And he's right. Every time you look at it over the past so many years, it's like 75% approval nearly every time. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't much different this time, despite mm -hmm. the challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of that is your uh, presentation and communication of it. So, <clears throat> yay. Thank you. Yeah, no, I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wasn't on the, I almost said menu, agenda. Um, staff appreciation, and I do like that it says staff appreciation here. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Kyle, for that on the agenda. Um, the week of May 6th, mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we have had a couple of staff members that or staff members, board members, that we appointed to kind of um, be in charge of coming up with an idea of what we might do. We've done gift cards in the past to, to um, local businesses. Um, and I've found just feedback, one of those businesses, and people have said something to me that um, that is truly appreciated, and I think more so than a get-together. I know that a get-together gives us a chance to thank people in person, and, and that's also really important, and we should all make an effort to do that. Um, but the opportunity to have a nice moment um, outside of the school, well, I, I think, is important. The staff really wants gloves this year, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Conflict of interest. Yeah, here we go. It could be. It could be a. It could be a. It could be a. T- it could be a um, a, uh, like a tax, a tax shelter for you. <laughs> it could be like, I made this donation to the school. Massive donation. <laughs> That's true. Oh my Woo. God. If only we needed a tax shelter. <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> I wish you did, Sam. Um, so if they're, uh, here I go throwing you under, but Katya, you have done that in the past. I, have, I would love if someone else wanted to do it. Sam Hooper. I yeah, yeah. You, you were supposed to do I, it with me last year. I did do it with you last year. I just you did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like the apprentice, so yeah, I pass it off right. to you. All right, I'll take it on. Okay, would someone like to help Sam out? I'll help Sam. Great, Thanks. thank you, Sarah. Thank you, facilities committee, of your. Um, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So May sixth, maybe next month, um, come to us with. It, either a couple ideas or one idea. That would be fine as well. But yeah. that'll be on the agenda just to let us know what you're thinking and we can help brainstorm. If anyone has an idea, throw it at them. Um, I thought we were going with the gift card thing. No? It's up to us, but we'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so maybe instead of just coming with the idea, a, a, I want a, a formal plan, presentation. Yeah, a we'll plan have, for how yeah. you might split it we'll up, a, and we'll have a PowerPoint and very cool. <laughs> samples. What was your <laughs> budget? budget? Oh yeah, there was a budget. Estimated budget. Um, was it ten, ten dollars per? Yes, that was the gift card amount, mm. but it was to a few of them, so I think it was six. I remember, yeah. if you check with We should Linda. have it in their records yeah. where Linda we paid out last year. Because I think in. we did it to four or five different locations. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we gave $10 to total six total different budget. locations or something like that? Yeah, that each but person more. got one yeah. gift no, card. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but each person so got $10? $10. Each staff member, yeah. It's, you think but it's too low? We got to do better than that. Well, I would agree. Yeah. If someone gave me a ten dollar gift card, I'd be like you, you appreciate it. Hey man, you can get a breakfast burrito with yeah, that gift I card, so don't knock it. But now people like it. We they, yeah, it feels like they kind of pass them around too, like some trade. Yeah, trade them. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There should be a budget line for that somewhere, like what we paid last year, so we have an idea of what the cost is. So maybe you and you and Sarah can find that. Yeah, yes. Hopefully. Reach out to Robin Pembroke and ask her what the budget is. Then divide it by the number of staff members and see what you can do. Mm-hmm. Try to crank it up. <laughs> All right. All right. Got a $10 no, gift no, card. Be we'll give you a sliding card. scale. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can approve it. All right. Thanks, you both, for taking that on. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, action items recap. Uh, action item for all of us always is um, review, review, review. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, look into the policy governance training um, mm-hmm. uh, 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 folder um, so you can keep up with kind of your self evolvement uh, as a board member. That's on all of us. Um, Katya and I are going to meet with Heather. Um, People have committee assignments. There are other committees. I think we can talk more about that next time as well. Um, because while we don't call them standing committees, they are committees that still exist. So um, people can think about whether they still want to serve on those. Um, and we can be really clear about what the charge of those committees are. Yeah, like the gift certificate committee, <laughs> really clear what we're doing. So I, this is a place I are. like to be on. Like, <laughs> we are here for you, Mr. Cooper. Um, okay, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, we do have cause for an executive session. Um, it sounds like for both yes, please. personnel. Um, and I have an item as well just for the board on contractual issues. Discussion. So we'll have two? 
So we'll have two. Do we need to come into public session between? Yeah. You and somebody you potentially else? Should okay. Vote People coming on in what, and others not yeah, coming into the second Yeah, what I'm going to talk about. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming we'll have Lane and Heather in the first one. Correct. But we wouldn't have them in the second one. Correct. So I'll entertain a motion to enter our first executive I session. I move to enter our first executive session and invite Heather Lawler and Lane Millington. Do you have to say for first. personnel? Pursuant to which one of the we're mm -hmm. supposed to be. Person, person. Uh, Can you mm -hmm. throw one to her? Uh, what is it? VSA 313A. Is it A4 that we're doing? What's the title? Uh, disciplinary dismissal action. Is that one? A C. Uh, that, would, that would fit. Okay. Or A4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you Great. Uh, all it? those in favor? Oh, you got it. Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Michael. Nice to see you. Well, yes, for that one. Good. Okay, um, we are now back in, in uh, public session. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept, accept the recommendations of non-renewals. Thank you, Katya. Do I'll I have second. a second? Seconded by Sarah. Uh, further discussion? Oh, we don't have Anne. Well, we're still a quorum. We're oh, a quorum. She's not here. Mm -hmm. What's that? Well, we, we can just wait for the vote. Okay. We'll pretend we have further discussion. Where'd you go? The restaurant. To the restroom. Oh, I feel badly. I shouldn't have. It's okay. Okay. At least there's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk more about dance later. Yeah. <laughs> It's a method of, um, it's rubrics for teachers on every way you could measure. There's four pillars, right? And then each of those pillars have multiple standards. Just like you design instruction for students, you design instruction, like you design uh, your expectations for teachers. And it's a, so there's a few different models out there. And Danielson is, all of the principals um, and the cabinet agree that we're moving to Danielson next year. That's awesome. I know. That is what, that is what I, <laughs> I get. I, you're going to get, you know, acting like an education geek if we yeah. talk about this too much more. Because you're totally hitting my, like, excited things. Hi, Anne. There's a motion on the floor uh, to accept the, the recommendations, recommendations of non-renewals. Non and there has been a second. So further discussion to be had. Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. The motion passes unanimously. I'd like to move, we enter executive session to discuss uh, contract negotiations. So I'll move to enter executive, uh, Thank executive you. session under VSA 313A1. 313A1. Someone else to. I will second that. Got that. Sam, you got it? Yep. Kati is moving. Sarah is seconding. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. We have a motion have some things from to Katya about. to adjourn. Yep, and we don't need to vote on it. That's my, was my understanding from Correct, other meetings. Yep, yep, less than 12. I'll second that in that meeting. Meeting is adjourned. 9.07. Wonderful. Meeting thank you, adjourned. everyone. Yeah, thank you. With no action taken. Yep. Okay, so these get so you can Thank you for um, videoing.